นะครับโอเคโอเคโอเค that's a very interesting one right very interesting one um but nowadays I don't think we have that right do we still use this one no anymore not anymore because we, right? yeah because we have another electronic device or technological innovation okay as I mentioned in the morning right we have yes. call we have more Computer assisted learning or uh, mobile phone, mobile assisted uh, language learning. Yeah. So now you don't have a cassette tape. You got what we got? I, I, iPad or oh, oh, no, no. I, uh, podcast, right? Things like that. Okay. So we yeah, focus. We just, yeah. We just keep the classes as our memory. Memory. <laughs> Okay, memory. Um, do you still have a cassette player? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, interesting. That will be yeah. that will be very expensive in ten years time. Very expensive, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, we mostly we focus on grammar, right, or vocabulary. Students have to remember a lot of words. Okay. And uh, go there, standing in front of the teacher, and read it out loud, and still score your performance. You know, at that time, okay. The good thing is that it's convenient for teachers who just rely on you know like knowledge. But I superior L two knowledge because teacher are assumed to have you know better knowledge you know than student. That's you know. Uh, so we get it right from the very beginning. So. Assuming that you know, like what is right for your student, the thing is right for you may not be working well for other contexts. So depend, right? However, okay. However, we have some challenge or limitation for this proposal or this teaching innovation. Why? Because. You remember the word or vocabulary or grammar, rules or linguistic feature, but then such knowledge can be easily forgotten. Simply because you just mem, it's just about memorization. Sooner or later, if you never use it, it will be fossilized. It will be gone, or it stay the same in the way it is. The input is not easy to integrate with the current interlanguage skill or system, okay? Because we not use just only one skill, but in the combination of more than one, two or more. Know all the grammar rules, yeah? Because teacher teach you directly. You remember the grammar rules, how to make plural. But the thing is that you are unable to use it in context. For example, a lot of Thai students know grammars, a lot of grammars, okay, grammar rules or linguistic feature, but then they can't really speak in natural setting, in different situation, or even cannot write, simply because our knowledge is not enough. We know the word, but we can't really use it in context because the knowledge of that particular grammar or particular vocabulary item is not enough to be able to use in our uh, context. Okay. Also worry about making mistakes. A lot of EFL learners are worried, okay, about making mistakes. They are afraid that, okay, because my English is not good, so I'm, 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 I'm not confident, you know, to talk about blah, 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 and so on. Now, forget about grammar. Keep on talking, talk, talk, and talk. The more you talk, the more blah, 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 and so on. The more you talk, the more you make mistakes. But actually, the more you learn, okay? You learn from the mistakes you have made, okay? Real life language practice. Why in or not enough real life language practice? Simply because we use the language with the teacher in the classroom. Right, so how can we use, but we go outside class, the language is not really the same. Based on my experience, everyone, I assure you, I know how to, uh, to say hi to people or greeting, 
Good morning, good afternoon. Hello, how are you? Good, uh, good evening, things like that. I know how to use the you know, kind of greetings. But then when I was there in a um, native or L1 context, I keep saying good morning, good afternoon. But my friend never say good morning, good afternoon to me. Hi, mate. Okay. Like a goodie or whatever, you know, a lot of, things, you know, so why, why people say good, you know, like, so when I say nothing wrong with my English, nothing wrong with good morning, good afternoon. Okay. But my friends, my native friend do not use the same word at my, they use something else. Sometimes they don't say even hello, things like that. But, oh, what are you up to? What are you up to, mate? Okay. Things like that, or yes, uh, and something else. They you know like not the, but but when we learn here in Thailand, we learn okay. We start from good morning, good afternoon before we moving on to the next one. So things you know, change you know a lot. So don't stick to what you have learned, right? So be or get ready to open, open your mind for something different. I say. I, I was taught, you know, since I was young, coffee, coffee or beer is uncountable now. You cannot cow it. You cannot cow coffee. You cannot cow beer because it's fluid. No chips. The chips depends on the container. We usually a cup of coffee or things like that. But then I was there. My friend, okay, Simon. Let's go for a coffee, a coffee for go for a beer. I say, why a beer? Because I was taught that beer, we cannot say a beer, okay, a coffee. But then in, in native setting or natural setting, a beer, yes, we can say a beer, we can say a coffee, simply because, okay, we go for one coffee or two coffee. That's simply because, you know, like we say, a, a, a cup of coffee. But another way to say it's just a coffee representing or reflecting so that you know like we reflect you know like a lot of things that we have learned so far in 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 an EFL context yes excuse me sir is uh we, we could say that is there over generalization or something like that um right is this possible um in in, in use like that in 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 our, our context right in EFL um yeah. it might be because we focus too much on grammatical uh, grammar rules, right? We focus a lot or pay attention on grammar rules. So, so that might be uh, the issue. So now we, we try to uh, focus on meaning rather than form. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, could okay. we have, could yeah. we have a very great. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sure. You can get. Get a coffee, okay? Get a yeah. coffee, okay? So, and wake you up, keep you awake because I um, noticed that some of you may be, you know, like about to sleep, perhaps. I <laughs> or, or maybe like, so get coffee or, or some drink or some some beer, okay? A beer <laughs> to, to wake you up, okay? To get a beer. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We, we will get back. You get a beer, yeah, you, you're more confident to talk, right? <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will have a break for 10 minutes. We will get back at uh, 2.45. Okay, enjoy your refreshment. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, now we come back to our webinars in the afternoon session. So would you please welcome our guest speaker again? Okay, everyone. So welcome back, everyone. Okay. You get a beer or a coffee or both a beer and a coffee, okay? To get the, <laughs> and okay. a durian, okay, durian, okay, durian. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so just only drinking water. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, okay, okay. So, to, uh, let me share the game and the PowerPoint there. 
Okay, you may have or get an idea of what research area of interest you're going to propose for your dissertation or thesis, right? You have it now, right? The sooner the better. That means you're going to finish you know, earlier, right? Or early in the journey. You have to, you, you want to finish within time, right? Not spend over time. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Huh? It depends on our sharing or idea. Maybe we can uh, we can get longer. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> okay, but it's better to finish in time, right? Okay, so we we can do something else after the finishing, you know, the, after degree. <laughs> okay, we can travel and enjoy life, you know, overseas. Okay, or traveling, you know, traveling. Okay. okay. The next proposal, you know, a, a teaching and you know, a proposal for your ISLA classroom, okay? ISLA classroom. So it's about, the proposal is just listen and read. So why just listen and read? So just listen and read, okay? Is developed based on the hypothesis, okay? That language acquisition, take place or happen when learners are exposed to uh, comprehensible input through listening or reading or both listening and listen and, and reading at the same time, okay? So that's the hypothesis of uh, just listen and, and, and reading. We say uh, comprehensible input there. Why comprehensible? So make sure that the listening, okay, or reading that should be, you know, suitable for the level of student language proficiency. If too difficult, they hear it, but they won't understand that, right? So make sure it's suitable, comprehensible input, okay, there. Language acquisition, again, okay, just read. Just listen and read based on the hypothesis or assumption that language acquisition take place when your student are exposed to comprehensible input. Okay, keep that in mind. Input alone is enough for acquisition and interaction is not really necessary, you see? Interaction is very important, but if we give enough or the student receive enough information, that would be enough for learning, for language, to, to pick up the language. But then again, here come the question, how much is enough? How much input is enough, right? How much reading should be enough for, you know, you know like master reading skill? Or how much is enough for, comprehension the listening so that back then we talk about that this morning about vocabulary size how much do we know in order to understand daily conversation or how much do we know in order to read academic texts at the university level okay or how much do we need in order to read or to write our dissertation okay things like that that's the thing comprehension based instruction Okay, for the activity that you are mentioned that reading for two, uh, reading forwards, you use a graded reader, so simplify text or things like that in order to help students, you know, like gain, you know, like, or uh, get exposed to comprehensible input. So the text you choose or you bring to your class should be suitable for the level of comprehension of your student. L2 learner need not, no, no, do, don't need to produce in order to learn the target language. You see, they don't need to speak, you know, in this one for this proposal, okay? They don't need to, uh, to, to produce the language. Instead, it's about receptive skill, listening and reading. The more they listen, the more they, you know, like be able to understand or understand the text. Or, if you bring your, ask your student to watch the movie, 
make sure the movie you give to your student is easy enough or it's in the level of their comprehensible input or, or enhancement, right? So input flat there, you see high frequency exposure to specific language feature. What's the area of you know, focus there you want your student to, to take, okay? You may highlight or underline the key point or keyword there as I did it in the PowerPoint and, and, and so on. So again, everyone, this proposal, when you develop your teaching innovation in your own classroom, make sure the, comprehend, uh, the, compre the input is comprehensible, not too difficult. Since it is assumed that language acquisition take place once learner are exposed to comprehensible input, okay, through listening and reading here, okay. So let's just see there one way to comprehensible input or to get the comprehensible input, okay is uh, to provide your student, to provide your student, okay, uh, with a listening and reading comprehension activities, okay, with the activity or task, with no opportunities or very few opportunities to speak or to, uh, to interact with other teacher or other student in the classroom. However, we have some limitation as well, because no proposal or no teaching innovations are perfect, right? It depends on the, the, the learners, the teacher or teachers or a lot of things involved in, you know, like, uh, because the aim of t or the goal, remember in the morning, the goal of instruction, okay? SISL is to help learner achieve the target language or mastery a target language, right? Or being able to communicate in English. Okay. So the limitation that this proposal or this innovation may work at the very beginning level, but won't take learners very far. If you ask them to listen, a lot of listening, and then it's okay at the beginning, but maybe don't take them this far. Works with immersion student. Immersion student is like you have immersion program. Immersion program, like you know, always study abroad. For example, you go abroad during the summertime or something like that. You do like immersion program, like you take some student to do some kind of project, but then you put the student into with different backgrounds of L1. So they learn from each other. They, you, want, you take them to Australia, you take them to America and learn the culture and as well as the language from their exposure to the target language. This proposal or innovation may promote listening comprehension because a lot of listening, right? So of course, their listening skill will be better, okay? Learners do not notice the gap. Or see, they don't know that much about because they're just listening and read. Maybe they cannot see the gap. Or well, what's wrong with that? What's the what's the difference between blah 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 and so on? So they didn't pick up the language or, or the, the, the grammatical rules or things like that. Because this innovation focus on receptive ability or receptive skill and comprehensible uh, input or comprehensibility, ability to comprehend uh, the text. Also here comes the issue of active listening. What is it about? It's about, you know, when you listen to someone else, it's kind of interaction, right? Someone talk and then someone listen, okay? So interaction between, you know, the interlocutor may not, you know, um, not be focused or attain, you know, like that much, okay? Anybody can think of any activity to help or promote listening and reading. If you want to develop your, your, your lesson plan or your teaching innovation, what would that be 
for your class, for your own class. Anybody have any ideas about the activity for this proposal? <laughs> no yet, not yet now, not yet now. Okay. A lot of this thing can be something like, okay, um, like this one, right? You can see that, okay? Like uh, credit, reading for reading, this might be a lot, right? Extensive reading, okay? Credit reader, using uh, the credit reader or uh, extensive reading program, we have that in Thailand. Or uh, listening can be listening to a story, storytelling, for example, okay? Or cartoon, okay? or something very easy. Okay. Oh. The third one, let's talk. As the name itself, you see there, let's talk. The name of the, uh, the proposal there. You say, let's talk proposal here, usually focus on or emphasize the importance of access to both comprehensible input and also conversational uh, interactions, conversational interaction, okay? So if they need to interrupt, talk and talk, how can you ask the student talk and talk in one class? Teacher talk or student talk, think about that. Teacher talk more, so teacher improve English more than student, right? <laughs> okay, so task based instruction approach. Again, task based activities. We bring the task, what kind of task? If you want your student to talk, bring the task there. The task must be familiar with your student. What about cooking or cookery class? Ask student to teach other friends or explain how to cook some, how to, how to, how to make some tam or how to cook some tam or uh, 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 chicken with soup or, to, or tom kai, like tom kai, or okay, things like that. What kind of ingredient? Let them talk. And the way you ask them to talk or explain to them should be like kind of interaction. Talk and answer. A negotiate, you know, negotiate thing there. Do the pair work if you want them to talk. The pair work, okay? I am. I don't see many teachers use the pair work, and in particular at university level now. Even at my university, when they give up talk, they do group talk, group, or group work activity, but pair work, I rarely see that. But some teachers still use that. It's also a, a, a good uh, activity as well for the uh, proposal. Let's talk, right? <laughs> Excuse me, Professor. Yes. Uh, for parallel activity, I always use right now. Oh, oh that's yeah. Uh, it's it's like, working yeah. well. Yes. That's good. That's okay, good, good. Yes, it still work. I always use that kind of activity. Okay, that's good. That's good. It works. So other colleagues can follow uh, you, right? And then use the idea of, you know, parallel. That's can, if you want to focus on speaking and then you see there uh, this proposal and people use it support that when learner are given the opportunity uh, to uh, to engage in interaction you can see they are you know like forced to negotiate because you give them you know tasks or things to do they are forced actually or encouraged to uh, negotiate for meaning Right, they want to get the idea of what's uh, out there. Okay, that is to explain and clarify, you know, their intention uh, of of the talk, their thought, their opinion, and so on. So that's the that's why it's good for uh for this proposal. Um, they you know encourage in you know interaction. Are uh, they are forced to to do so? You know, in 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 uh, in order to express their thought, their feeling, or whatever in the topic given in the classroom or classroom activity, this is you know like 
allow students to arrive at mutual understanding because they need to understand, right? So that why they talk, talk, and talk to their friends or their partner or their group members in order to uh, gain or get the mutual understand of uh, among the group members. This is especially true. It's good or beneficial, you know, when, you know, the students are working together in order to accomplish, you know, a particular learning goal. For example, in Tasbit language uh, teaching, according to the interaction hypothesis uh, mentioned, negotiation leads to learner or student uh, to acquire the language forms, the words and the grammatical structures there that carry the meaning they are attaining to. Okay, so the um, this is the theoretical uh, view of uh, uh, conceptual uh, framework or point of view underlying the teacher student behavior in the uh, classroom, you know, like and from the student and student interaction as well. So uh, different kind of interaction. So we, uh, we see there, okay. Negotiation for meaning, very, very interesting. I love that actually. The way we improve, we pick up the language because the way we talk or the way we negotiate, you know, like, uh, but our responsibility is to provide more and more opportunity for our own student in the language class. So with a few hours a week and how can we do that, right? Mm -hmm. We need to uh, come up with uh, some kind of language. Yes, of course, modification. So we need to modify the text, right? In order to make it suitable for our student level of proficiency. And of course, corrective feedback is a kind of scaffolding strategy. Teacher need to give some maybe uh, uh, corrective feedback, also like some suggestion for student to further develop the language ability. Okay, but sometimes or many times we need to ignore when we hear something mistake, okay, in the student uh, talk, just ignore it because we want to focus on meaning rather than form. In the proposal of let's talk, go oriented activity. What is the goal of this activity? Focus on that. If you want them to become you know, successful in in this negotiating, you know, or buying some uh, some souvenir at the uh, in the in the maybe like a tourist, you know, place, then it's okay as long as you know the the meaning, you know, communication is successful. And a lot of research doing this to add to back up this kind of pro proposal. But somehow there are some limitations of this proposal or innovation in the uh, focusing on, you know, like negotiation. Yes, it's good for teaching of speaking or oral skill. Good because like you want to focus on uh, speaking, right? But maybe not good for reading and writing. Okay, but if you want to integrate the skill, I usually use this in my, my own class. Actually, I, I have, you know, reading class, critical reading class or something like that. I usually give a kind of research, uh, article to my student. Okay, ahead of time. Okay, one or two weeks. Okay, ahead of you know, the class time. And then, or maybe some article very short, uh, make it easier for them to or, or draw the attention, okay? Or encourage them to, to read. So, and then we do the group reading or maybe do a group, small group discussion. And then later on the whole group, you know, like, and we bring the text or any kind of reading that relevant to their own interest. For example, I bring the concept of, you know, like, what we say last time, we bring about, um, the concept, the relevant to them, like the accent, for example, do we need to speak like a native speaker or it's not necessary to do so? And then they have different ideas and the student, you know, feel free to talk because they want to share their experience. 
about you know speaking with Thai accent, with Lao accent, or things that how people look at them or laugh at them, and they want to share experience in their class. And we we don't focus on grammar at all. We just want to hear what they feel or how they feel about their own experience. So very interesting, and I can see little or student talk more and more. So it's not just about reading, but also the student can improve their speaking and also critical thinking skill. The context of a student do need to work quietly in their own pace. That means some reading or talk, sometimes they are not confident, you know, in talking, you know, in the public, but then we need to develop, help them develop, you know, this kind of skill. It's true of native and non-native teachers. You know, because when we talk about you know the speaking class, usually we usually or university usually assign uh, English native speak uh, teacher okay to teach or be responsible for their score. But sometimes we don't have any native speaker at school or at uni you know, your department. So we also uh, uh, you know have like Thai teacher who have you know like. Uh, uh, Thai teacher of English actually uh, to teach speaking class, but here come the issue, some limitation because uh, those who teach English may not have enough mastery or level of English proficiency. So in terms of teaching speaking, they may have, you know, the teacher themselves may get stuck, you know, in expressing their thought or feeling about a particular issue as well, right? Okay. And teacher and student attitude, of course, student may feel free or have you know like more confident to speak to native speaker but they are afraid to talk in front of thai teachers who teach english right because the attitude they, do they have any experience about that okay can i share about my yes. experience about the reducing the topics of let's uh let's uh, talk right uh -huh. because of uh, covid 19 uh, age right we have to teach online uh -huh. for one, two, three years, right? And I use like a, one um, task base, right? I let my class to do like um debate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for this task base, it can, I mean, that push them to speak, okay? And they can choose the way they want to be like um one want to be like um MC uh -huh. or a timer, all right? And they can set their own groups. Uh -huh. okay? And for the end of this task base, right? I think um I found out that they have a uh, higher I mean uh, uh speaking uh, speaking tasks, okay, uh, speaking okay. skills, right? It means that uh, we try to use our input at the um, beginning of our term, right? And our output is this task base. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ajahn. This okay, okay, I, I, yes. I, I, I talked to one of my colleagues there, like uh, a native in, uh, English, you know, teachers actually. Um, he said that during the online, during the uh, during the online conducting online class, and he asked, he teach a speaking class, and then he found out that students speak more than you know face to face class, and he explained that because students you know like because they don't they have more confidence because face to face classroom like they maybe they feel you know. Unconfident because their friends may be laugh at them when in the class, but then when online, right? When doing online class, so they can, you know, like they just, you know, like close our chat to you know, the camera, you know, off the camera, and then they can, you know, speak without, you know, like or maybe like they can talk by, you know, reading at the script or things like that, and then that that what I got to from my colleagues. So do you have any uh, similar or different, you know, uh, experience in terms of teaching, read, uh, speaking, or like class, Kap? Okay, and could I add one? Okay. Yep. And for um, doing like this 
task based like um debate right mm -hmm. uh i give them like a true rules the, the okay. uh, first one i want to blame them okay uh -huh. they can speak out whatever they want okay uh -huh. and uh i will judge them or uh, not say it's right or wrong okay in english gamma okay they can speak okay uh -huh. okay that but that's good yeah that's good the concept of let's talk okay we focus on meaning okay not to the grammar so no right or wrong it's just about an idea right it's not about an idea so we encourage students to talk as much as possible in this proposal attitude also important the personality as well characteristic of the learner right so we need to some because like some students are very quiet actually they're quiet because of their personal or their personality or their the characteristic okay not because they they don't have anything to share they may have but then they don't like talking that much okay so you need to come up with, we have to come up with uh, alternative, you know, a strategy to help or encourage uh, those students, you know, talk more. So we may, you know, bring variety of tasks in the classroom to help them with that. Or you can focus, you know, research on this area, you know, if you want to you know, like, if you're interested in, you know, speaking or things like that or how to improve, uh, student speaking ability or speaking performance. And um, I would like to add more that um, the way I use in the um, task base, right, is okay. a term of uh, TPR that we don't force them to talk, okay? Uh -huh. If uh, he or she choose to be only a timer, yes, he or uh -huh. she can, okay? If uh, they are not ready to speak right they can choose uh, to be like um timer okay and then do they switch the swap the role okay do, yes. do, do they okay yes because, uh, yeah. some student may feel like okay ajan ajan i don't want to to speak i'm not ready yes so i will be a timekeeper and every time volunteer to be a timekeeper right yes. so we need to because make sure uh, we can to change control. yes the position and okay. for this um debate online right we have around three rounds okay mm -hmm. Okay. Round one, round two, and round three. Okay, Ajahn. Mm, and that's good. They change good. their positions. Okay, very good strategy. Very good strategy, Kap. What about other people? Are you still with us, Kap? <laughs> or sitting there sleeping? It's late afternoon, right? Late, very late afternoon. And also, it's Sunday. So, it's we have been working the whole week so it's the last day of the week so people get you know like exhausted you know like you know at the end of the week right mm -hmm. okay yeah. professor let me share for class for for me the way you like uh, uh, teaching method uh, for example that uh, after they learn about vocabulary on that topic some kind of topic that we have uh, three topics before we have midterm taste mm -hmm. uh, the first one is people and next is their behavior and next one is their shopping so after they learn so they have to uh, I, I give them a like a topic shoes and that they have to choose topic and then uh, to make or create their own situation and or uh, conversation that and I use pair activity uh -huh. that they have to uh, demonstrate in front of class. Yes, mm -hmm. that's for my sharing about the classroom activity. Uh -huh. So Thank the plan you. that and they do in front of the class. So it's like a role yes. play in front of the yeah. class. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just low play in their power activity. It's just only two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Each to each person. Okay. Uh, good for activity. Such activities are good for uh, speaking, you know, like practice. Yes. So, uh, if the, the teacher focus on speaking, that are great activities. Cap. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We just mentioned, okay, this cut about three first three proposal of the teaching, you know, in the classroom. So we let's have a look at this one. The teaching method we just mentioned are flexible somehow. We cannot fix it, right, to be like this. So time change, we need to modify or adjust it in order to suit a particular group of students, our students. Even you teach the same university, but different majors, you may need you know, to adjust or modify your activities in order to fit in, um, into their groups, right? a group of students, right? Even you teach business English student and then English major student and then engineering student, the activities, the purpose or the, the objective is the same, but then the text you bring or the activity you bring into class may be uh, different or slightly different in order to, to, to fit their or suit their level of language proficiency. So consider um, a learner difference, actually consider learner difference even in one group in one class right 40 students there there might be okay like 40 different characteristics right in that class also concept contextual factor okay the context the environment there in that class or that faculty students okay and also some limitation is out there in so all of this need to take into consideration when you develop your proposal for teaching or lesson plan for teaching bring some technology into class nowadays you know, we can't deny the technology the technology play a very significant role in developing a target language okay so if you're good at that you can do again yeah, a lot of technology as you say you can use the there are a lot of program, you know, online, available online for you to download, okay? In order to check the text, whether it's easy or difficult or suitable for your student, level or not, you can use the online program. Like you can range program on Encore program, you know, or uh, the, the Corpus, you know, American Corpus, Coca or British uh, National Corpus, uh, BNC, okay? Things like that in order to to help or or to plan your lesson or teaching lesson. I think you have heard about that, and maybe you have already attained some workshop related to uh, the core past. Right. The next one, two for one, everyone. Two for one or three for one. Very, I would say everyone very popular in Thailand or in EFL context. In Asia, also in some part of Europe, very popular, this kind of proposal or teaching. You can do your thesis or research project about this. When we talk about two for one, you see, think about, you know, the, the concept of uh, EMI, okay? EMI English, you know, medium instruction. Or you can think about CLIO, okay? CLIO uh, program. Or, and now we have a lot of programs like, English language program, EP program, mini EP program, or international program, you know, things like that. That's an example of two for one. Okay, two for one. Any, anyone would like to, to chair cup or to, to, you know, we, we almost there, we almost finished. So we almost finished. So if you, they will talk yet. You haven't talked yet. You should do so. Cap, otherwise, you won't have a chance to talk <laughs> uh, into the lecture. Cap, okay. So, okay, let's see. Do this one. Uh, get two for one. Get two for one is developed based on the hypothesis or the assumption that students will develop both their 
academic skill and L2 ability at the same time. For example, um, uh, Creo program or English program, the student not just only develop their academic skill in that field, but also English, because English is used as a medium of instruction, right? So this is uh, related to the content-based instruction approach. And then we hear a lot about ESP, okay, ESP, or we use English for specific purpose. And then we teach English, okay, for specific purpose. But the, the thing is that some people misunderstood, I would say a lot of people misunderstood that concept. For example, at, at, I got experience in that, you know, like they teach English to, um, to, we say, to, to, to science student, to faculty of uh, student at the faculty of science. The teacher assumed that they teach, you know, like, uh, what we say, they teach science in English. It doesn't mean that. That means we teach English, okay? We teach English, not science. But English, we, English that we taught must be related or should be related to uh, science, okay? Not teaching science, but teaching English. But English taught should be related to science. So the same can make use of the lesson learned, okay? So both content and language gains at the same time. To still improve their academic subject, okay? Their subject area, and also they gain or improved English ability. So we have some kind of bilingual education or bilingual program. We have CLIO or Content uh, Language Integrated Learning or CLIO. And we have advantages, many advantages, you know, depends on a lot of variety of factors, like learners themselves and also their uh, student or learner's aptitude about this one. Do you have any, this? Uh, you have the program related to two for one proposal in or at your university club? Yes, I, I, I teach the um, English for a specific purpose, like, um, for example, English for public relations. Oh, so okay. I, yes, so I teach the student or about the, um, how to use the, the language in public relations. Yes, um, something like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, do you have any activities to share with your friends here, yeah, your classmates here? Yeah? Um, your class? Yes, um, uh, the activities that I excite the student, um, when, when they finish the course, I assign students to um, create the um, exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and mm -hmm. the one group is, it will be the organize the exhibition and the others have to create their stand and have to like um create their their own products to to sell to promote yes something oh. like that mm. yeah okay good activities okay what about other do you have any last chance for everyone okay for all of you last chance to talk <laughs> before we finishing up okay me i chair okay the class that I teach is um, mostly about public speaking. So it's, it's not um, content-based, but okay. um, some some of the things that I teach also about um, like strategy for speaking and also um, things to do for a different kind of different, different occasions. Like for example, you talk in Mm, funeral or if you're going to say a, a farewell speech 
So there are things that they're going to need to do before they look into the language patterns that they, they have to practice. And then um, before they can do it by themselves, what I usually do is um, ask them to watch some videos and then analyze the videos and then um, look at the language that, that people speak in each video. They need to work in group and then discuss and then uh, present the language that they have learned. And then later after that, I will uh, teach them more language that they can use for giving different kinds of speeches. And later they're gonna need to do their own speech. Mm, okay. So you ask students to do the job first before, you know, like the teacher takes role, right? In, 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 in learning. Okay, that's another good example of that. Mm. Excuse me, could I share one of a uh, of course? PSP? Okay. Yes. I would like to raise one like um English for science teachers, right? Okay. We give them our in our input. We taught them how to I mean, so use English words in uh -huh. their um teaching plans, right? And the end of the term. Huh? Uh, we plan to see their outputs by, they must, I mean, um, they must show how to teach uh, in class, uh -huh. Uh -huh, in the science subject, right? Because uh, when, when, when uh, they are in the first year, right? They uh -huh. have to be a training teachers, right? And some of them have a good chance to um, teach science for EP program. Mm. Okay, that's uh, why we have to try to push both input and output for them. Okay, that's good. So, oh, okay, you have like a, a teacher student, right? Yeah, so, yeah. they teacher, become a teacher. teacher students, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. This one is example of ESP, right? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh it's a bilingual one. It's bilingual education. So you 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 teach English to student. You teach uh actually English for we say English for specific purpose because they're going to teach uh, science in the future and you and through English. So you in order to understand the text or things like that, you help them by you know like teaching English that. Uh, specific to you know science okay that's another good example of ESP excuse me professor let me share okay for my ESP as well so because I'm a field of business English so I taught uh, English for accountant for account accounting major students okay uh, I, I got um I maybe I got problem about that uh, in class that uh, they cannot they cannot understand either uh, what I say because uh, they they are not English major so I don't understand that point so I have to teach them like a grammar translation method <laughs> that I have to I use I give them the text and then uh, they cannot understand so I had to uh, explain maybe word by word something like this. <laughs> Yeah, for accounting, accounting major students. Okay, that's very interesting <laughs> point or it shows that not just you, but also I think many mm -hmm. teachers in an email yeah. context you know, are facing this situation. Yes. The thing is like when we teach English to students, the thing is mm -hmm. like many times the student you know, uh, cannot engage in the activity simply because they do not understand, you know, like uh, the English there. So again, here, we need to think twice about our lesson plan. So firstly, we need to bring something, you know, like uh, we need to know first, you know, the level of their English proficiency. And if they don't have enough vocabulary, mean need to start from the very beginning or bring something very easy or maybe help them learn some vocabulary. So at least the vocabulary necessary for basic conversation first. 
if we bring the text, you know, they, we know that they do not understand, you know, the text that much, but then we bring the text and we teach them how to speak or English that's relevant to their uh, subject area. Again, the problem still they don't understand simply because they don't have enough vocabulary. So here are the things I would like to uh, share with you that we need to start with uh, some easy vocabulary, starting from high frequency. Okay, you may take some time, you know, to begin or to focus on vocabulary specific to accounting uh, major student or, or, or uh, English or you know, the high frequency word or easy word or the first 1,000 or the first 2,000 word first. Or you don't need to teach every word, every single word, but then you show them or encourage them or motivate them to learn. If they have or highly motivated, okay, so they can look for more information or learn uh, themselves at home. They spend some extra time, you know, learning uh, such vocabulary themselves, but students may need guideline okay from the teacher because we cannot we don't have enough time to teach everything for them right and also they have just a few hours a week maybe we meet them only once a week so maybe not enough so we have to come up with strategy but again we do not we are not sure yet what strategy is going to work the best yes and the teacher need to find out or try different strategy. Okay, that's that that my suggestion uh, to sort you know like out the problem in 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 you know we we also have this kind of problem you know everywhere I would say. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. That uh, limitation again here we have challenge some challenges for this uh, proposal or innovation problems with the teacher center again is a combination of the two things two for one but the teacher was it lack certain language feature readiness for the content i can see there was in my own situation so we teach english we know uh, how to teach them but then some technical vocabulary we don't understand that I give you the example, everyone have this very interesting example for me. I would say, one day I become a translator. I have to, I, I, I come up with the word, you know, mushroom. Okay, the word mushroom. So mushroom is a kind of food, uh, you know, like you, you cook it and then you eat it, right? But then I went to the tall building and then talked to the, the building manager. They got some problem there. They have they got some they got some problem about the elevator or the lift going up and down the building. They go to the 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 room, the machine room, and say there's some problem about that. And then one engineer, one engineer said to me that okay, we have some problem with the mushroom, with the mushroom. So what come up, you know, like to my mind, say like, the mushroom, the mushroom, we should go to the market and buy it, you know, and cook it, something like that. But in that situation, mushroom mean the machine room, the machine, you know, things that related to, to the elevator, not the mushroom for eating. Okay, it takes, I said, I, so I asked my, my friends or my colleagues, what is it? What does it mean by mushroom here? I, I got confused at that time. So later on, you know, I, I turned out that it's a kind of, you know, like it's a, it's a room that's for, they keep all the, you know, operational lights, you know, machine there, you know, put everything there in that room. So if you want to check whether it's run properly or not, just go to that room and see everything, what's right or wrong, okay? That's, that's about E. ESP, English for specific purpose. So the problem for English teacher is that they can teach English, but they don't know some technical vocabulary specific to that thing. Again, but for, for example, content teacher, those who teach, you know, like engineering student, they know a lot about, you know, like engineering stuff or things like that, but then they don't know how to teach in English, right? Because they don't have good command at English. So we have, we still you know, have some 
difficulty are probably related to the teacher as well, and also subject teacher and content teacher. Uh, and also the student, for example, you teach accounting major student, right? But then the thing is student lack English proficiency. They don't have enough vocabulary. So again, here come the problem. How can we solve that? But somehow we need to teach, we need to follow the curriculum, the lesson plan. But the problem is still there. You talk in English, but still do not understand. Without understanding, nothing happened. Okay, at the end of the day. Okay. So yes, so after that, I, I use Thai. <laughs> and then you always it. use L1, right? You L1. <laughs> okay, okay. But then again, the student may get the content, but not the English, right? But actually, the classroom is about English, right? Uh huh, okay. Social pressure, okay? Because, I, okay, I don't, I don't understand that, but then I need to do the exam. I need to get A from the teacher, from the professor. So please use L1 for me, otherwise I will fail, okay? Or get an A for things like that. So content-based teacher, as I just mentioned, content-based teacher maybe uh, do not have enough, you know, like a language proficiency. But language teacher may not have enough, you know, content, you know, like uh, subject that can be a challenge you know, uh, for, for this proposal. Uh, next one, teach whatever teachable. Teach what is teachable, okay? So the proposal here is like, to, it's about teachability hypothesis. So we need to understand this. You know, we learn the language. Assuming that it is learned in a sequence, we have the predictable sequence of learning. We do not learn everything at the same time, but we learn step. We have step of learning, and we learn language. You know, you know, a little by little, and then we develop. We slowly or gradually develop. You know, like our knowledge. Okay, so let get let it follow a sequence or order of learning. So we should teach them, you know, something simple and then moving on to more complex, you know, for simplex to more complex, okay? So, and also think about the L1. What is their L1? Because L1 influences the way or how we learn L2. And the time we have each week, three hours. So how can we manage that, right? Okay and so on, you know, that's about uh, this proposal to teach what is teachable for, for the student. And also we have some limitation as well. Okay, this one you say, and the last one, teaching against the sequence. What it mean by that? Uh, do not, uh, you know, like, if you found out that your student is, or uh, maybe lack vocabulary knowledge. So you need to start from something easy. If you bring something difficult, it's just a waste of time. Something difficult does not promote learning. Something easy doesn't promote learning either, as we uh, uh, mentioned in the morning. here. How can we know our student, right? Which state or which step are they in? So, and we have mixed ability student or learner in one class. 30 students, 20 levels you know, you know, of language proficiency. <laughs> so, so how can, so how can we, oh, what should I do or yes. something like that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> have you experienced that? We have that? 40, uh, 50, maybe. Some. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some class, right? You have a lot of students, right? 60 students, 30 levels of English. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then, oh my goodness. So, what should I do? Things like that, right? Is that um, okay? How many people are still with us now? 
<laughs> we we just hear you know a few people uh share the things said, but some people already fell into sleep, right? No. <laughs> uh, I enjoy myself. <laughs> I Me enjoy too. Myself. I also enjoy your <laughs> teaching or lecturing. I, <laughs> okay, good, good to hear that. I enjoy lecturing, I enjoy talking to you, but I'm not quite sure whether you enjoy with me or not. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes, we, we are, enjoy Professor. a lot. Yeah. Oh. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, I we, actually I prefer on site actually because like you see, I I use a lot of energy, me too. energy. I walk around the class, <laughs> thing like that. Yeah, but, yeah me uh, too. I like on site. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, you know, even I, I sitting in front of my computer here, I still move around. You can see my, my hand, you know, moving around my, my yes, picture like and things this. like that. <laughs> I am, I'm always say I'm kind of a hyper, a hyper person, you know, <laughs> hyperactive <laughs> person, you know. I cannot sit still long, that long, okay? I need to move and things like that. <laughs> hyperactive person, uh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, and also when we see, you know, like mixed ability learners in one class, so the activity or the text you bring into your own class should be very, okay, should be varied, varying or different. So sometimes maybe like, you know, like difficult, sometimes easy or something, or sometimes between, or you can use so L1. There is a question for everyone. Okay, I have a question for you. Does L1 use, is L1, okay, is L1 or first language useful for teaching L2? And why? And or how? Um, Like, yes, I think it's still uh, useful because we, we can explain more if they don't understand in L2. So we yes. use L1 instead. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you, Rosamond. <laughs> yeah, I also use, use like L1 in, in my classroom too because I have to explain the, the text and the, how, to, how to write or the vocabulary. Yes. Okay. I think it's useful. useful. Mm, okay. Yes, a lot of people say that using L1 or your, uh, your first language, explaining in explaining, you know, like L2 to your student can be very helpful and help your student better understand that. But then let me continue asking this. And if you want to use L1 in your classroom, so when and who or what types of learner or when or where or which under condition shall we use L1? Under condition or situation or problems, should we use L1 to help, you know, explain, you know, things to the student? Like some kind of that student who cannot follow my, um, my, my lecture or, or they, oh, he or she cannot uh, cannot do something uh, that that other student uh, do. That means they cannot follow this. So I have to change uh -huh. to use L one to explain to them and make sure they really understand what what I want they to know. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Yes, yes. Yeah, you see, very good point because you say you use L1, you use your L1 to help explain when you see, you realize that your student do not understand. So how can we know that our student do not understand the lesson? Look at their face or their reaction. Okay. They, they respond that it's quite different from other students that, that they understand. Okay. Very good. So what about other people? Do you have anything to share about this? To share, I mean, to exchange, not to chair and then to sit on the chair, okay? Different chair, <laughs> the same pronunciation. <laughs> Professor, I, for, more de for more detail, not just only oral presentation that we, I ask them and, and 
wait for their response. It can be um, some assignment or task work that it reflect their understanding and at oh. the time. Oh, okay. It can be the way that I, I reshape my students. Okay. So it seems everybody here agrees that using L1 in L2 classroom is beneficial, like right? essential for better or, or better for comprehensible input, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. But, but if, if we teach like listening and speaking one, we should um use the L2, right? To to teach the student in the That's classroom. An issue, yes. right? Yes, yeah, reading and for grammar would be yeah. okay if you want to explain, mm -hmm. you know, grammar rules to the student, right? But if you are excited to do speaking, listening and mm -hmm. speaking, should we use L1 then explaining things? Or how much should be enough? Or how how much, you know, or how often, right? Because some students may not like like it when we use L1, right? You do you, you have any uh, any kind of situation like this? Very good point, actually, very good point. Interesting, yeah. Um may I may I share my experience? Please, yeah. Um per personally, I try to use the target language English, actually, uh -huh. as, as much possible in the class use is for uh, um, giving instruction but i will usually just just like one of the um, classmates um, Ajahn one Chanat said that we're gonna need to check students reaction look at their facial expression and also we can also shake by using like instruction checking question see if they really get what we are talking about um, what we said in the class or not but if it seems like they still don't understand. Well, we can use L1 in order to make sure that everyone understands the same concept. When, when you mentioned that uh, the students, maybe they prefer to, to like us to speak um, in our target, in the target language for L2, right? But my, my experience, I think that many of the students feel, feel at ease when we speak Thai to explain. When I okay. try to, in everything in English. And then when they feel like they're not sure what I'm speaking. So I try to rephrase, try to use easier language. And some of them like feel that maybe they're not familiar with this. So they feel like um, it would be great to explain in Thai. Mm -hmm. so that, that's uh, the reaction of my students sometimes, but not all of them, but some of them feel like Okay, if they uh, can hear it in Thai, it would be great for everyone to un understand the same concept, understand the same like instruction. A good point, actually. You can see it, you know, like uh, you just mentioned you need to, uh, you say you use easy words. Okay. Another key term, you know, for this one, we mentioned in the morning, okay, session that that's about foreign talk. Okay, this one, you, you remember this word, foreign talk or modify language. Okay, modify language or teacher talk. We can say foreign talk or teacher talk. The simple way, the sim, uh, simple way to explain this is that teacher need to modify the language in order to make it, you know, like uh, suitable for the Syrian language proficiency. And of course, you know, like many times we use L2 to explain our things or grammar rules in our class. But then when you see your student face or reaction, and many times teacher end up with, you know, kind of, you know, like what we say, like uh, you feel bad about that because you see the student reaction, you say, you, you feel pity of that, okay? And then you say, and then you end up with using you are your L1 to explain to your student. That's my good, but then if you keep doing that, you know, like try to help them by using, you know, like uh, modify language. And at the very beginning, some student may again, so maybe against with that, but I do believe that uh, sooner or later, you know, they will get or become familiar with that. 
Okay, with that. But again, here's you know, based on the research, you know, findings. Low proficiency student may prefer L1. Okay, to L2. But advanced learner may prefer L2 to L1. So you need to know your 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 student, right? Uh, a mixed ability, okay? You need to balance, okay? Mix upper level or lower level. 60 students in one class, but then 30 levels of proficiency <laughs> in your class. So you need to balance so which one or which way or you, you're going to, okay? You're going for. Uh -huh. it's, we, have, we still have a lot of many challenges in our classroom. <laughs> okay. The problems um, I always come, you know, over and over every day, right? <laughs> okay. Here come to the end of the proposal or the last innovation for today. The last but not least, okay, here. Yeah, not, not, um, we still have a lot more based on this one, okay? Get it right in the end. We start you know, it right, you know, from the very beginning and then we end it, you know, uh, right at the end. So this proposal, okay? So based on, you know, the, the, uh, the assumption or uh, the hypothesis uh, that, you know, we will something cannot be taught if the teaching fail to take the student readiness. I mean, they are not ready yet. So it is quite, Correct, you know, not quite correct in terms of, it's more like get it right as you go. It's not quite right in this way. So the challenge is that our student should get the best from a both worlds. Learners should be able to communicate fluently and you know, appropriately, but also correctly. That means we provide some tasks and things like that when our student or one realized, the teacher realized that student know how all the grammar rules or linguistic feature and things like that, our responsibility or our duty is how can we help our student uh, promote or help them promote their uh, fluency, reading fluency or speaking fluency. Very beginning, we help them, you know, like get uh, make them uh, get the correct answer or, or develop the accuracy, improve their accuracy. But later on, we need to improve, help them improve their fluency in terms of speaking or uh, speed up their reading, all right, their reading speed, things like that. Correctness, we almost certainly not take care of itself as catch and believe. What I'm saying there is uh, what it means by that, right? Like, Sometimes the teacher needs to step in and give them some or give students some advice or correct the mistake. But many times students need to ignore that and let the conversation go on. Okay, let students do the job and then they will become aware of it sooner or later somehow. So that the way, uh, let it go as it is, right? So we don't want to go back to the grammar orientation method. I mean, we don't want to focus on you know, grammar rules or teaching, you know, this kind of uh, explicit knowledge or knowledge about the grammar, okay? We mentioned this morning. And then focus on form. task based language teaching, again, here we come to the task and you say focus on form without is that mean we focus on meaning on communication rather than the grammar rules or linguistic feature this kind of thing may provide a very good platform for developing fluency of language learner there Okay, so that, you know, like, but then at the very end, we need to, teacher may need to step in, uh, step in and help students more often. But at the end, maybe at the end of the semester, maybe we just step away from, you know, uh, we may not interrupt 
you know, the negotiation or the activities, you know, run by, you know, like a classroom, you know, student and, and your learner. Challenge right there. We still have problem. Nothing, you know, is as smooth uh, smooth as you right like i am a international so we have problems somehow no no like I'm, I'm saying i'm saying you know like no research is perfect again teaching no teaching method no pedagogical approach is perfect okay this you know teaching approach may perfect for this class but not to the others so that why we keep doing this, we keep doing research, we keep researching for a better and better uh, pedagogical approach for our uh, ISLA or a second language, you know, classroom practice. So knowing when to provide corrective feedback, knowing when to step in and when to step away from the interaction. So that's a good uh, suggestion for this. So we, we have to know that if we don't know, you know, students usually step in often, often more and more. So maybe students feel reluctant to, to talk, right? So that might not be helpful in terms of developing or get it right in the end of this proposal. And teacher need to know when to explain grammar rule. Not every time. Sometimes we need to ignore that, ignore that right we don't we let it go let the conversation or interaction move on and then you need to balance between meaning based and and form based instruction or what when to do or when to step in and explain explicit explicit knowledge or knowledge about the grammar and we you know like just make it just in time that's about four uh, PM, right? Exactly for so good timing, <laughs> right? Okay, so here the con final slide, you know, like uh, the conclusion for the talk today. So I need everyone, you know, I would love everyone to take home, you know, the message that uh, it's very important, you know, for, you know, like us as the practitioner, you know, uh, to focus on both frequency and accuracy not just accuracy or know the grammar, but then we need to help them develop, you know, like uh, their frequency in a natural setting. Uh, natural setting here, what I'm saying, based on language classroom, because we teach our student or learner in a language classroom, because in an EFL context like Thailand, outside class, English is very used, so that's why we, try to ultimate, you know, like or, or optimize classroom practice should be optimized or make use of it as much as possible. Success or achievement in our language teaching depends on, you know, variety of factors. About input, make sure the input, you know, you have enough input for your student, for your classroom, language classroom. Compre the input must be comprehensible comprehensible, not too difficult, not too easy. As I mentioned, something easy does not promote learning. Something difficult may not promote, does not promote learning either. The interaction, how can we, you know, like provide a platform or opportunity for our student uh, to interact, you know, with the group because learning a language is about social interaction. So we need to provide that platform you know, for the student output, you know, enough output, that means enough, you know, for them to produce the language in the classroom in terms of speaking and writing. Do you have any activities for them? If you ask students to write, that might be too difficult, right? Because they don't know how to write, even though you are excellent in teaching writing, but then you need some kind of, uh, you know, scaffolding strategy. Think about sort of proximal development. How can we help students, you know, like you used to know something easy and more difficult, more and more complex and more difficult. And then until you are sure that your student can do it, you know, naturally in a natural setting or outside classroom. Focus on form. Yes, sometimes we need to focus on grammar rules, teach them explicitly or directly. Sometimes we need to 
help them, you know, indirectly. Okay, so balance the combination of the two, you know, when and where you should step in and step away from that sort of thing. And communicative language ability. The focus of that is like uh, help students to be able to communicate, communicate in English or communicate effective, effectively in English. And also, last but not least, we need to realize, to be aware that learner differences, different learners have different you know, strategy or uh, characteristic, different levels of motivation, or maybe learner believes uh, uh, aptitude, their language ability, and, and so on. These things need to be taken into consideration when you design your lesson plan. And also, when you want to do research in order to improve the quality of your teaching or provide put full information for practitioners and researchers and also educator, educator also policy makers for your uh, countries or nations. So that may come to the end of the lecture today. Okay, Cap. Uh, question, a comment, or anything, Cap? Uh, or anything you uh, want to add up or you want to uh, give some comment or feedback, corrective feedback? <laughs> oh. Okay, anyone else? If not, maybe uh, I myself, Rosamon uh, Pandongel. Uh, as you mentioned this morning that uh, for classroom perspective that there are two setting, right? Uh, instructional setting and naturalistic setting. Uh, what do you think that uh, our webinar today is instructional setting or nationalistic setting? Um, actually, I would say uh, our webinar today is regarded as uh, I-S-L-A, Instructed Second Language Acquisition. This, this webinar is regarded as a classroom. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a classroom. Okay. It is not a natural setting, a naturalistic setting. It's a classroom mm -hmm. setting. Classroom setting is regarded as, you know, instructed. SLA. Okay, so Clear. the best way that I'm trying, you know, that much today is that how can we have more interaction here? Mm -hmm. Because I do believe that the more you interact with other friends and also interact with me, so the more you get you know, an idea, you get your ideas about teaching, about research, about how a language is learned or things like that. Okay, but I'm not quite sure if uh, my, uh, you know, like uh, uh, input is enough or not. So we can't really say like, it might be enough for someone, but might not be enough for the other. So that's why that's the nature of classroom language or language classroom, it's nature. So that's the way you have to keep keep it in mind, okay? Because we can't really, you know, like it's no no perfect there, no perfection is out there, right? So that 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 the concept of you know like uh, the classroom. So basically today, focus on classroom setting, but this is the okay. online classroom setting or instructed. This very thank you for your question because this is very clear cut for the concept yes. of instructed uh, second language acquisition, ISLA, that the topic for today's seminar or, or webinar. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So anything, uh, anyone like to share or like to ask, please feel free to ask, yes. <laughs> so, um, maybe if not, have any more questions, so. Uh, maybe we will end it for uh, this webinar today. Okay. Um, 
On behalf of our PhD ELT programs, I myself and our classmate like to sincerely thank to Assistant Professor Apisak Sukying, our guest speaker, for your great presentation today uh, that we have in this morning session about the uh, theory of instructive SLA and L2 teaching innovation. Uh, moreover, we have known about the explicit and implicit knowledge for language learning, especially in communicative competence in classroom. And for the afternoon session, we learned about observing language learning and teaching in L2 classroom. So, uh, we learned how to develop in the language between L1 and L2 that focus on language production through teaching approaches. So we do hope that we can have a chance to meet and share again soon in the future, Professor. You are always welcome at our conference or online webinar next. And I'm also would like to thank our participants to attend and share the idea related to the topic today. So thank you once again for your kind contribution. Okay, so thank have you a nice very much. Day. <laughs> thank you very much too. And then um, it's great honor and looking forward to meeting everyone, you know, on site yeah. or sometime in the next yes. webinar or maybe on site or online or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, conference, yes, of we course. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because the uh, COVID pandemic is uh, disappeared, so we can meet each other. Soon. Yes, so you know, here at my university, we do 100% on, on site now. The university forced us to do it on site. <laughs> they don't ask us, but they force us to do it on site. We can do it online, but they say we need the real signature. We cannot use electronic signature now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. In our uh, uh, BRU as well, we be forced to 100% on site. Mm -hmm. But it uh, depends on our yeah electronic device is um, mm -hmm. like uh, always changes. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor, and our uh, participant today. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, and see you. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the day, Kap. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.